Our narrative begins thousands of years ago with the indelible imprint of various Celtic tribes and the Roman Empire on the region. These ancient cultures, each with their unique customs and traditions, laid the foundation for what would become an intricate tapestry of Swiss culture. In the vast expanse of time, the land we now know as Switzerland was a melting pot of civilizations. Celtic tribes, known for their prowess in metalworking and their deeply spiritual connection with nature, were among the first to settle in the region. These tribes, such as the Helvetii, left behind artifacts and folklore that still resonate in Swiss culture today. Then came the Romans with their impressive architecture, sophisticated legal systems, and a language that would shape many of the world's tongues. The Roman Empire conquered the Celtic tribes in the first century BC, incorporating the region into its vast dominion. This era saw the construction of roads, bridges and cities, many of which are still standing today, serving as silent witnesses to the Roman legacy. However, the fall of the Roman Empire in the 5th century set the stage for a new chapter in Switzerland's history. In the wake of the empire's collapse, small mountain communities began to form, each with its distinct dialects and traditions. These communities, scattered across the majestic Alps, were fiercely independent, yet they recognized the benefits of cooperation and mutual defense. Against the backdrop of the Middle Ages, these communities found themselves amidst constant threats from external forces. The need for protection and preservation of their shared values led to the formation of a unique political entity, a confederation. This confederation, a union of small communities, was a powerful testament to their shared commitment to independence and mutual defense. And thus was born Switzerland, a confederation of small mountain communities united for mutual defense. From the ashes of ancient civilizations and the seeds of small mountain communities, a nation was conceived, setting the stage for a fascinating journey through centuries of history, conflict, innovation and evolution. The year 1291 marked a pivotal moment in Swiss history with the signing of the Federal Charter, heralding the birth of the Swiss Confederacy. This significant document, steeped in symbolism, represented a union of three valleys in central Switzerland, laying the foundation for what would become a nation of enduring strength and resilience. The Federal Charter was more than just a document, it was a promise. A promise of mutual aid, a promise of shared responsibility. It was the beacon that guided the Confederation in its expansion over the next few centuries. With each passing year, more regions were drawn to this beacon, choosing to join the Confederacy and share in its collective strength. The Swiss Confederacy was not born from a desire for conquest, but rather from a need for defence. Its formation was a testament to the spirit of unity that prevailed amongst the people of the region. They were not united by a common language, culture or even geography. They were united by a shared belief in their right to self-determination and independence. This belief was put to the test in the Battle of Morgarten in 1315, where the Swiss Confederates defended their lands against the powerful Habsburgs. Despite being vastly outnumbered, the Swiss Confederates emerged victorious, demonstrating their formidable military prowess and strategic acumen. This victory was followed by another significant triumph in 1386 at the Battle of Sempach. Here, the Swiss Confederates once again faced the Habsburgs and once again, they emerged victorious. These victories were more than just military triumphs. They were symbols of Swiss resilience and determination, of their unwavering commitment to their independence. These battles not only confirmed the Swiss reputation for military prowess, but also secured their independence. They marked the Confederacy's transformation from a loose alliance of valleys to a formidable force to be reckoned with. And so the Swiss Confederacy, born from a simple pact of mutual aid, grew into a symbol of unity and strength, a beacon of resilience in the heart of Europe. Switzerland's tradition of neutrality is a cornerstone of its national identity. This tradition is deeply rooted in the country's history, tracing back to the tumultuous period of the Thirty Years' War. Amidst the chaos of Europe's religious conflicts, Switzerland stood as a beacon of stability and peace, carving a unique path away from the warfare that engulfed its neighbours. Enter the Treaty of Westphalia in 1648, a series of peace treaties that ended the Thirty Years' War. This proved to be a pivotal moment for Switzerland as it formally recognized the country's independence and sovereignty. 
More significantly, it set a precedent for Swiss neutrality, a principle that the country has upheld for over 375 years. This neutrality has allowed Switzerland to serve as a mediator in international disputes, a host for diplomatic conferences and a safe haven for those seeking refuge from conflict. The Treaty of Westphalia in 1648 set the stage for the Swiss tradition of neutrality that continues to this day. The dawn of the 19th century saw Switzerland transition from an agrarian society to an industrial powerhouse. This pivotal shift was marked by a surge of innovation and invention, a testament to the ingenuity of the Swiss people. Among these developments, two stood out, leaving an indelible mark not only on Switzerland but also on the world, the Swiss watch industry and the establishment of the Red Cross. The Swiss watchmaking industry is a prime example of Swiss precision and craftsmanship. Born in the heart of the Jura Mountains, it blossomed into an art that combined beauty, technology and accuracy. The Swiss watches, renowned for their unrivaled precision and exquisite craftsmanship, were more than just timekeeping devices. They were, and still are, a symbol of elegance, status and sophistication. This industry's rise put Switzerland at the forefront of precision engineering and design, a position it continues to hold today. In the realm of humanitarian efforts, Switzerland etched its name in history with the establishment of the Red Cross. A brainchild of Swiss businessman Henry Dunant, the Red Cross was founded in Geneva in the mid-19th century. Dunant was moved by the suffering he witnessed in the aftermath of the Battle of Solferino and sought a way to mitigate such human suffering during times of war. His vision led to the creation of an international organization dedicated to providing humanitarian aid to those affected by conflicts and disasters. The Red Cross's emblem, a reversal of the Swiss flag's colors, quickly became a universal symbol of aid, compassion and neutrality. These developments, along with many others, marked a period of rapid growth and progress in Switzerland. The Swiss watch industry and the Red Cross are just two examples of innovations that propelled Switzerland onto the global stage. The 19th century was a time of growth and innovation, putting Switzerland firmly on the global map. The 20th century brought its share of challenges as Switzerland navigated its way through both world wars, maintaining its neutrality. The Swiss, with their characteristic resilience, managed to steer clear of direct conflict, providing humanitarian aid and serving as a safe haven for refugees. In the post-war era, Switzerland underwent a significant transformation, emerging as a global financial and economic hub. The Swiss banking system, with its robust infrastructure and strict privacy laws, attracted wealth from around the world. Swiss banks became synonymous with security, reliability, and discretion, further cementing the country's reputation as a financial powerhouse. Switzerland's economic prowess wasn't limited to banking. The Swiss pharmaceutical industry, led by giants such as Novartis and Roche, made significant strides, contributing to the country's prosperity. The Swiss also continued to dominate the luxury watch market, with brands like Rolex and Patek Philippe becoming household names. But the Switzerland of the 20th century wasn't just about finance and industry. The country also became a diplomatic hub, hosting headquarters and offices of numerous international organizations. The United Nations, the World Health Organization, the International Red Cross. These are just a few of the many organizations that found a home in this neutral land. Geneva in particular became a city of diplomacy, a place where world leaders came together to resolve conflicts and promote peace. This era of modernity also brought significant changes to Swiss society. Women who were granted the right to vote as late as 1971 started playing a more active role in politics and the workforce. The country embraced technological advancements, improving infrastructure and communication systems. And yet amidst all this modernization, Switzerland held on to its traditions, preserving its rich cultural heritage and natural landscapes. From the ashes of the world wars, Switzerland rose as a global financial and economic hub, home to numerous international organizations. It's a testament to the Swiss spirit, their ability to adapt, to innovate, and to maintain their unique identity in an ever-changing world. Switzerland's rich cultural tapestry is as captivating as its breathtaking landscapes. In this wonderland of snow-capped peaks and verdant valleys, a symphony of languages rings out, each one telling a unique story of the country's heritage.
There are four official languages in Switzerland, German, French, Italian and Romanche, each adding a vibrant thread to the Swiss cultural quilt. German is predominantly spoken in the northern, central and eastern regions, while French is heard in the west. Travel south and you'll find Italian echoes in the cantons bordering Italy. Romanche, a language with Latin roots, is spoken by a small community in the southeastern canton of Grissons. Yet, uh, despite these linguistic differences, there's an underlying sense of unity, a testament to Switzerland's embrace of multiculturalism. This harmonious coexistence of diverse communities is a reflection of the country's respect for individuality and mutual understanding. With its diverse languages and cultures, Switzerland stands as a testament to the harmonious coexistence of different communities.